I'm the predictor, the tea sipper, the money flipper, the Yamaha rider, the Chevy driver. You know what it is, boys. Ah, Eli Tomac gonna be winning the 2020 Supercross title if nothing crazy happens. Let me just take a little step back, okay, to my predictions at the start of the season. And some of you guys are gonna be like, oh, wow, yeah, a lot of people, you know, bet on Tomac winning. No, no, no. You don't understand. <laughs> Listen, okay, for the past, like, three or four years, you know, when Tomax had this whole, like, everybody thought he was going to win the last three Supergrass championships, and he has one bad race, and then he doesn't win the championship, right? A lot of people been betting on Tomac winning the championship for the past while. And f those past three or four years, I literally predicted before the seasons ever even started that Tomac wasn't going to win. Every single one of those years, I was like, I just really don't think Tomac's going to do it this year. I think something's going to happen to Tomac again. Even that, even that like, uh, you know, third year, right? Because the first year he lost it to Dungey. Second year he lost it to Anderson. Third year he lost it to Webb, right? So even on that year that he lost it to Webb, you know, I feel like so many people was betting on Tomac to be able to do it then, right? But I was like, nope, I just really don't think he's going to do it. But before the start of this year, if you remember those videos, if you remember any of those prediction videos, I was like, you know what? I think, I think it's Tomac's time now. I think he's actually going to get it done now. And here we are. <laughs> I, I don't even know how to explain it, Doug. But I'm telling you, I have been literally laser spot on predictions with Tomac and Supercross for the past like four years, Doug. Literally spot on every single year. I don't know how that's even possible, but like, you know how most people, they just thought Tomac was going to win like every every single one of these championships, especially since after that that championship he almost won against Dungey, right? I feel like 90% of the population thought Tomac was going to win that next year. And I was like, man, I just really don't think he's going to do it. I just really don't think he's going to do it. What was that track reset? So, and he didn't do it. And then I was like, man, I really don't think he's going to do it. I think he's going to have another wreck like he had on the year that Anderson won. I think he's going to have another little weird wreck like that. He's not, he's not pulling it together for the Supercross championship, you know? I was like, I really don't think he's going to do it. And he did the, that exact thing. I'm talking to an absolute T, bro. Like, <laughs> to an absolute T, my dudes. I mean, I was going completely against everybody. You know, that you know that was like the what you would think when that year that Anderson won it, right? You just would have thought Tomac would have been the man. Like, how could he not have been the man and won the title that year? How could he not have done it, right? But I completely went against that grain, and then the next year, it's like, oh, crap, he's got to do it this year. Oh, my gosh, he's still winning like crazy. He's got to do it this year, right? And he doesn't do it again. And I predicted all that. And then 2020 rolls around. I'm like, all right, he's going to get it done this year. And this is, it's, it's to the point now where I could see more people thinking Tomac wasn't going to win it, you know, versus the last two years. I could I could see more people thinking now that he wasn't going to get it done, right? Just because you've got Webb in there, you got Censorillo in there, you got Roxon really in there now again. So it's like, you know, so now when there's even more of a chance for people to think that Tomac's not going to win it, I'm like, you know what? I think he's going to do it this year. And here we are. <laughs> Literally like three more rounds or whatever, and he's like a whole main event points ahead. Dog, this is insane. Like, and I think obviously, I mean, it is what it is. You know, we've had a crazy year. So, you know, that kind of thing just sort of, you know, it's kind of out of everybody's control. It's just one of those ordeals. So you can't blame anybody, but you could definitely make the argument that all of these, you know, Salt Lake City rounds are definitely playing into the favor of Tomac 100%. With the whole elevation thing, right? That that's what that's what this dude is all about. Like Tomac literally trains rides in Colorado. I mean, th you know, this is not some mystery. Like everybody knows Tomac for his body's literally been trained over decades to be able to ride in elevation. His body is literally physically trained to be able to do that, right? So, and 
not being able to breathe and not having the right amount of oxygen in your system can affect everything. It literally can affect everything. There's all kinds of people having problems doing this many rounds in that high of elevation like that in all these Salt Lake City rounds. You know, some of them boys have been talking about like they're getting blurry vision, they can't see, you know, they're getting dizzy, all this kind of little stuff. Roxon's talking about the breathing problems he's having, anybody with any sort of asthma issues. But good old Tomac over there, you know, he's just grinning in a you know, picking and a running and a jumping because this is what he's used to. This is what he does. Like this elevation shit is what he does. So yeah, it sucks. It sucks that it had to play out like that. And who would have known had it been a normal Supercross championship, if they went to all the different rounds, all the different, you know, dirt compounds that they hadn't went to yet, all the different stadiums that they hadn't went to yet, like normal, who would have known how that would have played out? Right? You know, it would have been a completely different situation. But you can't look at it like that. you got to look at it like, okay, this was the situation. It could have just ended at Daytona, which would have been really crummy because nobody was expecting that. Tomac would have won by, like, what, two points? He'd have won the whole championship or whatever, five points, whatever it was, right? That would have been really crappy. So at least they have you know, sort of given Roxon that that chance on something, whether or not it's super playing in Tomac's favor or not, Roxon at least was given the chance to try to get himself back back in the points lead and try to win the title, right? So that's really the way you got to look at it because that's the truth of it. He did get that chance. At least he got that chance whether or not it was playing in his favor or not. Holy huck, daddy. Um, so that's kind of the way I look at it. But uh, I don't know. Tomac is just freaking, he's clicking on that kind of drive, you know, sort of dry practice track, sunbeat track vibe. He is really vibing on that kind of track design. I think that's throwing a lot of them off because it's nowhere near like the normal you know, supercross tracks when they go in there and prep them and then they're racing at nighttime and the, you know, the tracks all like perfect dirt. It's kind of interesting how these Salt Lake City tracks have been really more like practice, daytime practice tracks, right? Dry daytime practice tracks. For whatever reason, Tomac has been really, really vibing on that. I don't know if it's like with him getting the, you know, the power and kind of sliding the ass end around and it's really helping him in that dry shit. I don't know exactly what it is, but um, but that included with the elevation, it is definitely, it's just Tomac's year. Like, I, I don't know what else to say. And I knew this before it even started. That's the crazy part about it. <laughs> I literally predicted all this before this even started. It's like the universes are just like coming together and it's like, all right, Tomac, this is your time, bro. Like, you have got to get this done now. He hasn't really had any of those weird, like, throwaway race crashes like he's had for the past three years. He's kind of been like a whole different Tomac. There's been a couple races he's just sort of chilled in fifth place or chilled in fourth place, didn't rush it, didn't have a super terrible race. You know, he's, he's, he's definitely finally kind of matured into that Supercross championship, being able to really finish the whole championship type thing. And that's what I was talking about before the season started. I was like, dog, he, he, I think he's finally going to get it now. Like, he's finally going to get it. But uh, it's crazy, man. Like, just think about if Tomac would have just had it together 10% more, it's all he needed for the past like three years of Supercross. Just think if he would have had it 10% more together, he would have been the three time or potentially, you know, now with this year, potentially four in a row motocross champion and four in a row Supercross champion. He could have been that so easily. It's not even funny. And then you would have been sitting here thinking, oh my God, like Tomac is the absolute goat. Like, oh man, oh man, not again. Like, you know what I mean? It's just so crazy to me how motocross is so like such a game of little millimeters. Like he, he literally was that close for the past three years in Supercross and he's been winning them in outdoors, right? He literally could have been the four Pete Supercross and 
motocross at the same time. I don't think that's ever been done before. Maybe, but I don't think so. Four time in both of them in a row, all at the same time. Tomac was so stupidly close to doing that. Like, it's not even funny, dude. It's not even funny. It's actually sad how close he's been to doing that right there. But, um, I mean, yeah, obviously, you know, Villapoto got four Supercross titles in a row, but he didn't get four Supercross titles and four outdoor titles in a row together, right? That's what I'm talking about specifically. So, either way, Tomac's pretty much got this shit in the bag, dog. I mean, I don't know how Roxon can really... I mean, Tomac can literally have a full-blown throw-away mechanical failure wreck as long as he doesn't wreck and have like an injury of some sort that's the only thing he's got to avoid at this point as long as he doesn't do that then he's okay right like if he has a mechanical and gets dead last or he you know bends a clutch lever and gets 10th he is just fine he's gonna be just fine right and not only that but he has to have you know that bad of a race and Roxon to be winning or Webb to be winning every single one of these races, you know, because odds are Roxon and Tomac or Roxon and Webb's probably going to go back and forth if Tomac's not up there. So that's going to be another three point gap difference anytime one of those wins over the other. It's going to be real hard for Webb to catch back up at this point. I just don't really know if he's going to be able to do it. I don't think so. That would be a super long shot. Um, yeah, I just think it's kind of it's in the bag now. I mean, I think Tomac's going to wrap this thing up like a one race before the final or whatever, right? I think I think that's what he's going to do. So either way, kind of a crazy turn of events. All it takes is just a couple couple races where that dude real close in points in second gets like a fifth or a ninth or whatever, and then you got somebody like Tomac over there winning damn near every single race the point swing freaking changes quick bro changes really quick and that's what i mean by how that like supercross championship mentality and maturity you cannot have you cannot have a worse finish than a fifth if you want to keep yourself in it you know what i mean you just cannot have worse than a fifth ever or you're pretty much done. If everybody else is on their game, you're done, dog. You're already done. If you're getting fifth places or worse, you're done. Like, I don't know what's happened to Barsha. He's pretty much out of the points. Um, yeah. <laughs> you pretty much have to be getting podiums every race if you want to stay in the championship hunt. That's just the way it is. So, yeah, definitely let me know down in the comments what you guys think. I think Tomax will run away with this shit. He's got this in the bag now. T Sipper, the predictor. You know what it is, dog. Later, dudes.